So today we're going to look at money flows. So we're using the experimental sculptor plugin and we've recently added the ability to size things by uh, financial amounts as opposed to just numbers of documents. So this has been quite useful for examining sort of marketplaces like uh, Crunchbase. Um, and this is a data set dating back from 2013. It comes from crunchbase.com. Um, I'm using the Creative Commons licensed uh, version of this data set, um, which sadly isn't quite up to date, but um, the main website has all the latest information. Um, I'm going to look at Swift type. So this is a site search and enterprise search platform, um, sort of hosted service uh, running on Elastic Stack um, and now part of Elastic, so recently acquired by Elastic. But prior to that, there were a number of investments, um, financial investments made by various different investors. So we can take a look at uh, how these came together using the Sculptor plugin. So let's pick the Crunchbase index and we're going to run with uh, this default set of fields and let's have a look at some of the data. So uh, essentially it's investor X invested a money amount in company Y on a particular date. Um, so that's the, the essence of the data. And um, of course you can use search to filter the data. So we search for Swift type. And we get all the documents uh, relating to Swift type investments. So we can look at this data in a number of different ways. We can uh, look at um, some of the actors who are involved, the companies that were obviously involved. So Swift type, the only company involved is Swift type. So let's add that to the query builder. Get rid of my free text search. So we now have a structured field. Um, let's have a look at the investors. Um, so these are sorted by default by dot count. So you would think that Alexis O'Hanion here was most significant because he had two documents where the others had one. But obviously in financial investments, it's not the dot count, it's the sum of the money, the investment amount is kind of the important thing to look at. So this is a new feature in um, Sculptor is the ability to size by um, properties of documents, in this case, financial amounts. So these are the, uh, the main investors in Swift type. And what I can choose to do is add them to my query or drop them into this blank canvas here. So let's do the, uh, the latter. Let's take the, uh, the investors and drop them into uh, this blank canvas here again. They're sorted by dot count by default. Um, but let's change that again to uh, sums of money and we can see uh, who's invested the most money in Swift type here. Um, so we can actually uh, add extra things in here to start to see some of the connections between things here. So if, if for example, we drop Swift type in here, um, that draws up the connections here. Um, but it might be interesting to have a look at what other investments these these organisations have have, uh, have made these investors, uh, and perhaps filtered by subject matter, so investment types or categories of company and time. So let's have a look at how we would do that. So if we look at the categories, then obviously Swift Type is in the search category. So let's add that into there. Um, let's disable Swift Type for now and just generally look at um, these. Um, investors. So let's go back and pick up these investors here um, and we'll drop them into our query builder. So now looking at search and Swift type investors but not necessarily their Swift type investments just generally all of their investments. So we can now have a look at which companies that's, uh, that's added in. So these are the other search companies that um, the Swift type of investors have invested in and again you know we might choose to add those into our graph visualization and we can see the volumes of money that they pumped into various different search companies over time. I say over time and um, we can't actually see the time related nature of this stuff so there's some very old investments here dating back to 1999 but we could for example filter to some of the more recent um, investments and then our graph would obviously filter by, by that time period here. Um, and if we wanted to sort of narrow in on particular set of these things, then we can select them um, and we can throw them into the timeline. And again, here we're looking at straight dot counts, um, but we, uh, we can, again, uh, reset the default and then start to have a look at investment amounts. So we can sort of size these, these interactions 
and we can see who is investing what and how much over time in which organizations. Um, so it's a handy handy tool to actually not just look at dot counts, but obviously look at size of um, financial investments, particularly in this uh, in this data set here. Um, so hopefully that gives you some ideas of the sorts of things you can do um, if we were to use these kind of aggregations on, on other data sets.